Hi Jim Bennett and a warm welcome to this Zest Smart on Dynamic Risk Assessment 101 where we explore the fundamentals of risk assessment in an ever-changing environment and signpost you to further information. Dynamic Risk Assessment I was exposed to the concept as a young firefighter in Glasgow Fire Service. I then started to travel further afield to the highlands of Scotland, mountaineering, rock climbing. Dynamic risk assessment is core to these activities. And then I started to go further, going globally in the oil and gas business. So let's look at some of the fundamentals, the fundamentals 101 of DRA. Dynamic risk assessment is commonly used to describe the process of assessing risk in a changing or involving environment where what is being assessed can be developing as the process itself is being undertaken. The principal steps involved hazard identification and an evaluation, method of controls and recording. Uh, the events that we've been assessing encompasses situational awareness and this is a combination of attitudes, previously learned knowledge and new information gained from the working environment that enables people and organisation to gather information needed to make effective decisions that will reduce the likelihood of harm to people and their environment. This involves two elements, organisational responsibility and personal responsibility. For its part, the organisation must provide the necessary support to ensure workers are able to remain safe within a hostile environment. They need to be clear what they expect a worker to do in the field and workers must be able to identify hazards and decide whether risk control is possible. And workers should feel confident enough to stop the job or call for more help. I find a really useful definition of risk is hazard effect times probability. On a daily basis, we're involved or we're exposed to various energy sources and they will have a particular effect. For example, electricity, electrocution, biohazards, contamination of our environment. And that helps us to identify hazards and get appropriate controls for them. In hazard identification, the brain tattoo or the mnemonic, the brain, the memory jogger of big boys can get mashed, not paying road tax early, I find is particularly useful when we, we think of energy sources. And for that, I mean, as we can see here, biological hazards, body movements, that's pulling, pushing, lifting, chemical, gravity, fall from height, mechanical, noise, pressure contained within vessels and pipelines, radiation, thermal, hot and cold, electrical energy sources. I find it useful, particularly coming from my early days in the fire, fire and rescue service, to look at energy sources, look at fire above, around and below. And another useful technique which we used in advanced driving is this principle of far, near, here and rear. Far being the horizon. Near is the middle distance. Here is just in front of you and rear obviously is what's happening behind you. So it's good to be able to have this dynamic visibility, the sensing skill set of looking at hazard identification. 
The next stage of our process is establishing a Roche rating score. A useful way of doing this is by a matrix, as we can see here. We choose how severe the hazard effect or consequence could be, decide how likely it could happen, and where the two uh, values meet, that gives us our risk rating score. We then determine the appropriate controls and do the exercise again to ensure we can get the risks as low as reasonably practical. A risk hierarchy of control is then considered to determine the actions required to bring risks, as I mentioned previously, as low as reasonably practicable. However, it should be remembered that elimination and substitution controls remove, reduce the hazardous energy effect at source. All other forms of control only reduce the probability of the consequence happening. The energy is still there. Engineering control is put about putting barriers between the, the energy source and the personnel, the people, or the environment exposed to it. Administration is limiting exposure to it. And PPE, personal protective equipment, is protecting ourselves from this energy source. And our lowest, lowest level of protection is... PPE. For learning and growth, it's good to record your assessment. Please check out the worked examples in the links below. It's, it's also worthy of considering reviewing your business management system and harmonising with the new ISO 45001 Occupational Health and Safety Management System Standard Principles. There are 2.78 million people dying each year due to workplace incidents or work-related illness. We can individually and collectively make our organisations and communities stronger, smarter and safer. In summary, dynamic risk assessment is about having a focus. Focus on people, the kit, the equipment that we're using and systems that we're working to. And with this in mind, are you aware of the major hazards within your workplace, within your community? Are there suitable and sufficient controls in place? If not, what can you, what can we individually and collectively do to make a difference? Please check out the links below. Until the next time, be stronger, smarter and safer.